This is a 2009 BMW Z4 35i S Drive. And back when this car came out in 2009, it was the only Roadster BMW produced. It was supposed to rival the Porsche Boxster and the production run for this car lasted up until 2017. So that's eight years of this model before it got replaced by the G variant you can see on screen right now. And very interesting about the Z4 and BMW's lineup is that there was no F version. So there was, you know, you have the F33 series, there was no F version of the Z4. It was E89 and then it was G whatever. Anyways, 13 years later, let's see what this car is all about and let's see how it drives and what the quirks and features are. Okay, and before we start, I just wanna give a shout out to this channel sponsor and that is you um, as you can see this channel has no sponsor it has 11 subscribers so if you want to see more content like this if you think this is underrated if you want to see more car stuff then hit the subscribe button uh, like the video and then maybe share it with some friends or someone you know that might like this content anyways let's get on to the quirks of the car okay so one of the first things to cover with this car is the key you can see that it's pretty much a standard bmw key from this era and just like any other bmw key like this if you hold down the unlock button then the windows will start to roll down. However, because as previously said, this is a Roadster, uh, not only the windows will go down, but the roof will go down as well. So let's see that in action. I'm just gonna hold it down right here. And there you go, in around 10, 15 seconds from a coupe to a Roadster. All right, so now getting inside of the car, I have to mention something and that is the heft of the door. You know how people say G-classes have the the, the loudest the best clicks when it closes the door well the thing is the door of a z4 is also very heavy and you wouldn't expect it because you know it's it's just a small car listen to this thump when the door closes wow that is that is super loud and the door has to be very heavy because it's basically the only thing that's protecting your body from any type of impact when a collision comes in from the side you can see on this side of the door how this is where your head would be and then the door basically comes up all the way to your head because it's protecting your whole lower chest which you, you don't really get in uh, in other sports cars all right now let's take a look at the steering wheel uh, in this car it's it's beautiful it's perforated and it's got these shift paddles on both sides you can see you're clicking in like this to decrease the gear and then you're clicking it like this from behind to increase the gear and this is very useful for bmw drivers because obviously you're going to be on your phone half the time and if your phone is in your left hand then you can just shift uh, both up and down with your right hand very useful and i know people really dislike this system but i've used the one where you have minus on one and plus on the other and this is a lot a lot better all right so now getting into this car it's not as difficult as you might think and on the new i8 you might hit your head on this part right here but that's not the case here i can pretty much very comfortably just sit inside no problem and uh, once we're inside we're in the cockpit you can hear the clunk again amazing I love that sound. And once we're inside, you can see that uh, there is no screen in this car until you put in the key right here. You put in the key, you press it, and then the screen lifts up. I think this is the only model of BMW that had a flip up screen and it's very cool. You can also program this. I've programmed it right here. If you press the number five, which is a control display on there, it just closes. Um, normally you can do this, but if you, because of BMW's shortcut menu right here, you can just press that button and um, you can program it so that it closes. Okay, so now on the left side, there's another quirk of this car, and you can see that in the switch panel, not only do we have four switches, but we have a fifth one as well. And you wouldn't expect this because, you know, this is a coupe convertible. You're not expecting to have anything more than two. So the, the two right here, they're for these windows, right? On the other side, when we pull this one up, you can see that there's also a small window that covers that gap right there. And then if you hit this switch, when all the windows are up, then they all go down at the same time. There you go. Now, because this is a Roadster, there are no back seats. As you can see behind the seats, there is no back seat, but there is a pass-through right here. I believe you could get a ski bag, you can get a ski pass-through, or you could get this kind of three shelves. Um, this car has the three shelves option, and uh, it, it's good for storage. You can also you can also store things right behind the seat right here. There's a small net, and uh, it catches stuff really nicely. You can just put whatever you want in here, and it's going to be safe. Uh, from flying out the the roof all right so one last thing i want to mention in the interior is you can see that uh, this armrest right here it's been very used and you might think that's a low quality letter or whatever but the thing is this car has yeah right there you can see 143,000 uh, kilometers which is super crazy for this car okay so at the start of the video you heard me mention that this car is 35i z4 35i s drive now i'm going to explain what that means in bmw terms these numbers represent the displacement of the engine in deciliters so you would expect this car to have a 3.5 liter engine but the thing is it doesn't it's a three liter 
but the thing is they put the five because it's kind of a bit more power than the three liter this is a 306 horsepower engine and there's also a 35 is now the s uh, is kind of like a sport i don't know and it has i think 30 horsepower more so this is 300 horsepower that is 330 the i it stands for injection this is a gas powered car so it's a petrol car it's a it's not a diesel that's the thing it would be 35d if it was a diesel this car there were no diesels all of them were i and this is another thing that is going to be very apparent when once i mentioned the s drive is because all of these cars were i's there were no diesels and all of these cars were s drive because s drive stands for i guess sport drive as opposed to x drive which is all wheel drive and <laughs> this is just real wheel drive so once someone mentions that they have a bmw z4 35i S drive, what, what, what you really need to hear is that it's a 35 because I, it's, it, it's implied and then S drive also very implied because there were no <laughs> X drive models of this car. Anyways, 300 horsepower, very cool car, very powerful as you're about to see. And um, let's go into the starting it up. Now, before I fire up the car, I just want to let you know that this car was bought with an aftermarket exhaust system. This is a Remus catback and um, it sounds really, really nice. Let's take a listen. All right, so foot on the brake and just pressing the button. All right, let's give it a few revs. Okay, so you heard it right there. It's, it sounds amazing. It's a really good car. It's twin turbo, by the way. I forgot to mention that it does have twin turbos. And uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is that this car has so much technology inside of it for a 2009. I'm not talking about adaptive cruise control but it, because it doesn't have that. I'm talking about technology that's actually useful. I'm talking about very good traction control technology. I'm talking about uh, things that make the car so you can't mess it up. And you, you, can, you saw it in that clip where I revved the car. It wouldn't rev above 3000 RPM before it detected that it was it was safe to do so um, and that's what i really like about this car it, it, it's full of technology that makes you not mess it up and the last thing i want to mention before we drive the car is the boot space all right so with the trunk open you can see that we have the uh, roof lowered and there's still a lot of space inside i've definitely fit two suitcases plus a lot more things and trust me when you have the roof up it's like it's a huge it's a huge trunk and one thing to mention is you might want to raise the roof and then put your things in and then lower the roof because the access hatch is, you can see, very narrow when the roof is down. Here, I wanted to give you a front shot of the car. You can see that for a car that was made in 2009, you can see why they produced it up until 2017 uh, because it's so, so beautiful. Let's just uh, take the car for a spin and let's see how it handles and I'll maybe give some comments. So starting it up, I mean, beautiful, like beautiful. All right, now here we're out of this cool zone. Um, I'm gonna put it in manual and I'm gonna put it in Sport Plus. Um, and uh, let's give it a few pulls, so. Yeah, so, okay, so one thing that I wanna mention is that this car is so powerful, you know, it revs so fast. So if you, if you stomp on, on the gas, then the car is gonna be, you know, shifting through the gears immense quickly. It's got a seven speed dual clutch automatic. Um, it's, it's lightning fast, it's super fast, at least for my standards. And the thing is, uh, you don't really want that because you want to hear the car rev out here. We've got some barriers, so I'll, I'll just drop it down into second right here. And then if we stomp it... Alright, maybe I wasn't correct, but uh, let, let's, let's see what the bridge is like. Uh, right now we're on the bridge. I'm going to drop it down into first and uh, let's give it the beans. that's 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 really nice and the thing is the downshifts on this car are amazing i mean wow <laughs> wow <laughs> i don't drive it that often but when i get into it i i can't take the smile off my face it's just amazing it's just amazing it's not even the power like I, this car you know if you had one of those smaller engines like the 23i 28i whatever it would be just as fun because it's not about the power at all. It's about the car. It's about the experience. And this is just a beautiful car and a beautiful experience. Okay, so now what I want to show you is the launch control on this car. And um, the way the launch control works, you put the car into Sport Plus and then you put it into manual mode. And then you press both at the same time, the gas pedal and the brake pedal. And um, the car is warmed up, don't worry. So let's, let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, 
And uh, right now, I'm gonna put the car into death mode, previously discussed. Uh, if you press the brake pedal and the accelerator at the same time. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That's okay. So final thoughts. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a Doug score. I don't have a market score, but I think I'll give this car a 10 out of 10. I mean, this is amazing. Um, you can see I'm pretty much in love with it. And I just want to thank you for supporting the channel and subscribing to it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my review of the Z4 and I'll see you next time. Bye.